Is your AI art feeling too random and unpredictable? What if you could start with any image and transform it exactly how you want? Welcome to part 5 of the Comfy UI Masterclass series. After mastering text-to-image workflows, batch processing and case sampler settings, today we're unlocking the game-changing power of image-to-image -image generation. So far, you should be very familiar with the text-to-image workflow in which we generate a new image out of a prompt. As you may remember from part 3 of our series, the way text-to-image works is by first creating an empty image here in the empty latent image node. This node creates what you can think of as a blank canvas. Then the case sampler node takes this empty image and first fills it with random noise based on a seed value. After that it works like a digital sculptor, carefully chiseling away noise step by step to reveal your final image, just like an artist working on a block of marble. But what if, instead of starting with an empty canvas, we want to begin with an existing image as our blueprint that the AI can work with? This is called an image-to-image -image workflow. In an image-to-image -image workflow in Comfy UI, the primary goal is to provide a base image to influence the AI's output and guide it in a desired direction. This is especially useful when you have a specific vision in mind, but need the AI to refine or reimagine certain aspects of an existing image. Think of it like the difference between a sculptor starting with a block of raw marble versus one who begins with a roughly shaped form. The second sculptor has a head start because some of the basic structure is already in place. Similarly, in image-to-image -image workflows, we are giving the AI a starting point that already has some of the elements we want in our final creation. To implement our image-to-image -image workflow, we first need to remove the empty latent image node from our canvas. This node was essential for text-to-image generation, but now we need something different. Instead, we need to add a node that can load an existing image. Let me show you how to do this. In the node library, search for load image and drag this node onto your canvas. You'll notice it comes pre-populated with a standard sketch image, but we can easily replace this with any image we want to use as our starting point. Let me click on the upload button here and I'll select an image that will guide our AI. For this demonstration, I want to transform this Hulk image to incorporate robotic aspects and have him holding a flower. So I'm uploading this Hulk image as my starting point and leaving the prompt as is. Now take a look at the load image node. You can see it has a blue output connector labeled image. But there's a problem. We can't connect this directly to our K sampler node because the case sampler doesn't have any matching blue input connectors. Remember in part 3 of our tutorial when I explained that the AI can't work with regular images that we humans can see and understand? The model requires images to be in a special latent format. That's what's missing from our workflow right now. We need to encode our uploaded image into this special format. Let me show you how to fix this. I'll drag the blue image output onto the canvas and Comfy UI will suggest compatible nodes. What we're looking for is the VAE encode node. Once I add this node, I can connect the latent output from the VAE encode node directly to the latent image input of the K sampler node. The VAE encode node also needs a VAE input as we discussed in part 2 of our series. Since I'm using a model that has the VAE baked into it, I can simply connect my model node directly to the VAE encode node's VAE input. And that's it! Our image-to-image -image workflow is now complete and ready to generate. Let's run it and see what happens. Notice how the output wasn't affected at all by our input image. That's because we forgot to change one very important setting in the case sampler node called denoise. Let me explain what denoising actually does in our image-to-image -image workflow. In Comfy UI, the case sampler node works by first adding noise to the base image or latent representation of the image based on the specified seed and then progressively removing this noise step by step, guided by the provided prompt and conditioning. This process is core to how diffusion models generate or modify images. The process happens in three main stages. First, 
the K sampler starts by introducing random noise into the latent representation of our base image. The amount of noise added depends on parameters like the denoise strength and the chosen seed. A higher denoise strength means more of the original image is covered by noise, allowing for greater transformation during the denoising process. After adding noise, the K-sampler begins to remove it in a controlled step-by-step -step process. The AI uses your positive prompts to guide what features or styles should be emphasized in the final image, while negative prompts specify what should be avoided. During this process, the AI essentially dreams up new details in areas where noise has replaced parts of the original image. This is where the magic happens. The AI is reimagining your image according to your instructions. Finally, once all steps are complete, the noise is fully or partially removed, resulting in a coherent image that aligns with your prompt while maintaining elements of your original image. Let me demonstrate this by adjusting the denoise strength. I'll set it to 0.5 and run the workflow again. See how the output now shows elements of both our original Hulk image and the robot with a flower from our prompt? This is the power of the denoise parameter in image-to-image -image workflows. Think of it like this. Adding noise to your base image is like partially erasing parts of a drawing. This gives the AI room to redraw or reinterpret those areas according to your prompt. Without this noise, the model wouldn't have the creative space to make meaningful changes to your image. You might be wondering, where has the image size setting disappeared to in our image-to-image -image workflow? If you remember from our text-to-image workflow, the empty latent image node gave us the option to define the exact dimensions of our output image. But looking at our current workflow, you'll notice this option isn't available in the load image node. Let me explain what's happening here. In an image-to-image -image workflow, the size of your output image is automatically determined by the dimensions of your input image. In my case, the Hulk base image I'm using is 1024 by 1024 pixels, which means the generated image will also be 1024 by 1024 pixels. This is actually ideal for our current setup because I'm using an SDXL-based model, which was specifically trained on 1024 by 1024 images and produces its best results at these dimensions. But what if your input image has different dimensions? For example, let me show you this alternative Hulk image that's only 896 by 896 pixels. If I use this as my input, my output will also be limited to 896 by 896 pixels. While this might be acceptable for some purposes, we know that SDXL models work best with 1024 by 1024 dimensions. And I personally prefer having higher resolution outputs. So what can we do about this? Let me show you how to control the output size using an upscale node. I'll drag the blue image output from our load image node onto the canvas and search for a node called upscale image. By default, this node is set to 512 by 512 pixels, but we can easily change this to any dimensions we want. In this case, 1024 by 1024. Now let's delete the connection between our load image node and the VAE encode node and instead connect our new upscale image node to the VAE encode node. When we run this workflow, you'll see that our resulting image now has the full 1024 by 1024 resolution. Look at the difference between these two outputs. Notice how much sharper and more detailed the higher resolution image appears compared to the lower resolution one. By the way, this upscale image node is incredibly versatile. It can also work in reverse to downscale images. If you have an extremely high resolution image that would require too much VRAM and processing time in ComfUI, you can use this same node to reduce its dimensions to something more manageable. So this node works both ways. It can increase the resolution of smaller images and decrease the resolution of larger ones, giving you complete control over your output dimensions. Now that we've seen how to adjust image size, let me explain the different upscale methods available in the upscale image node. ComfyUI gives you several options, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. Let's start with nearest exact. 
This method is the simplest approach to upscaling. It essentially duplicates each pixel to fill the larger image. Think of it like zooming in on a digital photo where you can see the individual pixels. It's extremely fast and preserves hard edges perfectly, which makes it ideal for pixel art or any style where you want to maintain that blocky crisp look. However, the downside is that it can produce jagged or blocky results, especially when you're working with smooth, detailed images like photographs. Next, we have bilinear upscaling. Instead of simply duplicating pixels, this method looks at the nearest four pixels and calculates an average to determine what each new pixel should look like. This produces much smoother results compared to nearest exact. It's still relatively fast and works well for general purpose upscaling without requiring too much processing power. The main drawback is that it can sometimes make your images look slightly blurry, especially when you're doing very large upscales. The area method is actually designed primarily for downscaling rather than upscaling. When reducing an image's size, it calculates the average color of all pixels that will contribute to each output pixel. This helps maintain details better when you're making images smaller. However, it's not ideal for upscaling as it tends to lose sharpness in the process. For higher quality results, you might want to try bicubic upscaling. This method uses cubic interpolation and considers 16 surrounding pixels to calculate each new pixel value. It's suitable for high quality image upscaling, though it does require a bit more processing power than bilinear. Finally, we have Langsos upscaling, which is the highest quality option available. This method uses a mathematical function called a sync function to interpolate pixel values. The results are sharp and detailed, making it perfect for high resolution upscaling when quality is your top priority. The downside is that it's the most computationally intensive option and can sometimes introduce what we call ringing artifacts. Those are halo effects that can appear around sharp edges in your image. When choosing which method to use, consider what you're trying to achieve. If you're working with pixel art or want to preserve hard edges, nearest exact is your best bet. For general purpose upscaling with good results, bilinear or bicubic will serve you well. When quality is absolutely paramount and you have the processing power to spare, Go with Langsos, and remember, the area method is best saved for when you need to downscale images. So far, we've only been working with square images, albeit at different resolutions. But what happens when you want to use a non-square image as your starting point? Let me show you how to handle this common situation. For example, let's say I have this landscape image with a 16 to 9 aspect ratio that I want to use as my base but I need my final output to be a perfect square at 1024 by 1024 pixels. How do we handle this aspect ratio change without distorting our image? First, let's see what happens if we don't take any special steps. When I run this workflow, look at the result. The output is indeed square as requested, but notice how everything looks stretched and distorted. The AI has simply squeezed our wide image into a square format, making everything look unnaturally compressed horizontally. This clearly isn't what we want. Fortunately, there's a simple solution built right into the upscale image node. If you look at the node settings, you'll find a cropping option. By default, it's set to no cropping, which is why we got that stretched result. But there's another option called center crop. Let me select center crop and run the workflow again. See the difference? Now instead of stretching the entire image, Comfy UI has taken the center portion of our landscape image and created a perfect square from it. The result looks much more natural. We've lost some content from the sides of the original image. But what remains is properly proportioned and looks significantly better than the stretched version. Let's say you've generated an image that you're really happy with and now you want to use it as a starting point for further transformations. ComfyUI makes this incredibly easy with a simple copy and paste approach. Let me show you how this works. Once you've generated an output image that you like, right click on it and select copy image. 
Now go to your Load Image node, right click on the Image Preview area and select Paste. Just like that, your previously generated output becomes your new input image. This technique is particularly powerful for iterative workflows, where you want to progressively refine an image. That covers everything you need to know about image-to-image -image workflows in ComfUI for now. We've learned how to set up the basic workflow, understand the critical denoise parameter, manage image sizes, and handle different aspect ratios. All the essentials for transforming any reference image into something completely new. Before you go, two resources to supercharge your workflow. If you're still working on creating the perfect prompts, check out my Stable Diffusion prompt guide. While I made it using the web UI from Automatic 1111, the same principles apply perfectly to ComfUI. Want to try these settings yourself but don't have a powerful GPU? I've created a ready-to-use ComfyUI template on Lightning AI, giving you up to 22 hours of free GPU usage every month. There's no installation required. Simply click the link in the description. Sign up for a free Lightning.ai account, no credit card needed, and start using my Starter Kit template to generate AI art directly in your browser. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll join me soon in my next video.